And joining us now to discuss is Kimberly Grauer, Research Director at Crypto Tracing Firm Chainalysis. Welcome back, Kimberly. So according to the Chainalysis Global Crypto Adoption Index, Vietnam ranks first, followed by India and Pakistan. The U.S. ranks eighth. And perhaps you can shed light on why Vietnam clocks in at number one and your methodology behind it. Yeah, uh, well, it's really interesting to be talking about this today on a day when uh, the prices are, are reaching all time highs because a lot of people have been talking this year about, you know, which hedge funds are getting into cryptocurrency and why, but we've been following the story of cryptocurrency adoption all around the world. And we built a methodology where we at Chainalysis were a data platform and we are able to see all of the funds all of the cryptocurrency transactions going in and out of services that over thousands of services that we track. And we realize that many of these services have a geographic footprint that we can, that we can look at. And we can see that by looking at the web traffic data. So many services for banking or language reasons, or even just network effect reasons tend to operate or predominantly operate in, in certain countries. And so and we merged this fact. Yeah, so we merged this with our um, on-chain data to estimate the amount of country-level data. And then we were able to transform the data a little bit more and to see, and then to actually compare countries to each other. And I see Vietnam is in the top. How, 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 are, they, how are they using crypto in Vietnam to drive them to the number one in crypto adoption? So the every country has a different set of so social, political, and economic reasons as to why cryptocurrency might specifically be taking off. In Vietnam, what we heard about was a young tech-savvy population of people who are looking for new ways to invest in cryptocurrency, or not just in cryptocurrency, just outright invest. And there might not be your traditional ETF that is available to the young investors in Vietnam. And we we also heard about a strong remittance corridor out of Vietnam that has been shifting to cryptocurrency. And then there's also, you know, we, we talked to an academic at a, at a prominent university in Vietnam who speculated that one of the cultural reasons why cryptocurrency is taking off is just a somewhat um, comf a, comfort, a comfort with gambling. And so I think all of these things come together uh, the the need to invest, the young tech savvy population, the fact that the fact that the technology has evolved in such a way to make it a little bit more user friendly in Vietnam, remittances, and this kind of I guess propensity to, propensity to gambling has made it really take off this past year. And we're also seeing the number of wallets growing in these countries as well. What can you tell us about that? Our methodology actually looks at services. So most of the people who are engaging with cryptocurrency might go to a service and then we're able to track we're able to see how much representation on each service is coming from Vietnam and then extrapolate from there how much activity is is coming down to Vietnam. And one one thing you there's a lot of different ways you can use that data to um, to figure out or to estimate how many wallets there are in the region. I'm thinking maybe the number of act active deposit addresses, but because we are focused on services, because those are the, so they have the URL where we're able to actually get that web traffic data. Our sample is really restricted to service level activity. I'm surprised by how low the United States figures in the chart, uh, in the top 10 at least, China isn't even there. Tell me a bit about why, what's behind that? Well. One thing I don't I don't think it's necessarily um, the right interpretation to say that uh, because the United States is 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 lower than these other countries that there's not uh, that it's fallen from in its a crypto activity from last year when it ranked higher. Uh, we saw that with Ukraine, which was number one on the index last year, and this year it's a little bit lower. It's not the correct interpretation to say that those countries have fallen in their adoption. It's rather that other countries, all things considered, um, econ the economics, we weight all the variables for purchasing power, we weight some of the variables for population, all these things considered, how do these countries compare to each other? And I'll give you a reason, an example as to why that's important. If we directly compare the absolute values um, in 
China, for example, with those in Morocco, you're looking at completely different um, economies there. You're looking at um, different purchasing power where it takes a different amount of value to purchase one Bitcoin. So we introduced these weights to allow it to, to allow you to better compare how activity has, has reached the, the general economy. And so that, that's why let's go look at the absolute values. And we can see that the United States is actually really growing really fast, especially Western Europe, especially Northern and Western Europe, which are growing really fast in terms of their regional dominance. But if we're taking into consider these into consideration these other social and economic variables, that's how we kind of see a different picture. Mm -hmm. I, I also want to bring up uh, this news item that, uh, you know, it's been a good timing for Chainalysis because before Bitcoin surged to new records, Chainalysis added Bitcoin to their balance sheet. Uh, Chainalysis, of course, is a $4.2 billion software company. The transaction was facilitated by NYDIG, which is an institutional Bitcoin management firm that's popular on Wall Street. But Chainalysis hasn't disclosed how much BTC was purchased. Uh, I don't know if you care to give a hint. But and and as to why it was important to keep Bitcoin reserves rather than cash reserves, I actually don't know, but I do know that it's our way of of showing just how much we believe in the industry. I mean, at Chainalysis, we're focused on building trust in the blockchains, and I think it's our way of you know putting our money where our mouth is and just showing how much we believe in the industry. And so, working with these experts over at NYDIG, they're a long term partner of ours, and and it just seemed like a really, it seems like a great next step, an obvious next step for us. And reflecting on Bitcoin's all-time high, um, are you doing further research into Bitcoin futures ETFs and how that drives price and how this may play out going forward? We have been working hard on creating market metrics at chain at Chainalysis in order to use on-chain data to to help understand the what is driving the price of cryptocurrency and what signals might be you might want to look at. It's too early for us to tell right now how the how the ETFs specifically have been have been impacting the market. I mean, we can we can see that you know, this. We can see that there's a clear relationship with the with what's happening with the price of Bitcoin and this recent announcement. Um, ETFs are also not really in something we can observe on chain right now. So I think that I think that we're paying attention to this and excited to try and quantify the impact going forward and seeing how these uh, technological and financial innovations really kind of bolster the price over time. But it's definitely something we're paying attention to.